Do we have video now? Yeah, we got video now. Oh, we're good now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We got some exceptional fish on our yeah, intro. We're really doing it. <laughs> if that, if that doesn't get your cow. attention, I don't know what would. One heck of an intro. We are waiting on our guests, so we're going to go into it right now. And uh, first off, welcome to Old Carver Fishing Bait and Tackle Podcast. Old Carver Fishing Podcast. I never get it right. I've been doing it for over a year. you think I would, but... What do you expect? It's, a lot it's of half the fun and... of it. Low standards because nobody ever says anything, so it's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Welcome. Thanks for coming in today. It is going to be a great episode once our guest does get in to the podcast studio. We haven't been able to add him quite yet. Hopefully, our guest joins. But I'll introduce <laughs> myself and, uh, and uh, I'm going to go around the table and introduce everybody else here. If you are just jumping in on uh, Spotify or on YouTube, make sure you guys stick around for this one. It is Ted Ellenbecker is our guest, and he is a flathead catfish expert, um, feeding patterns. When they're not biting, they're biting for him. Um, that's the main thing I say is uh, there's always a way to find feeding flathead catfish in the summer, um, either in the spring, summer, or in the fall. And uh, Ted's going to be really good at talking about um, – patterning flathead catfish and being able to follow them during their feeding time so first off i'm luke henches fish on luke on youtube and tiktok next to me we have the wonderful tara Lindsay, tara fishing on the both tiktoks and the youtubes as well and then at the end we have mm -hmm. scotty scott scott he is a local uh ice fishing pro here I call him the wizard of ice. <laughs> 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 and then uh, next to him, we got Danny Two Naps. She, uh, <laughs> no, Danny Two Cats. Dan, he, um, Tone it down. He, uh, <laughs> he fishes the river here a lot locally for flathead catfish. And uh, he's also a pro staff here at Old Carver Fishing Bait and Tackle Shop. And across from me, the cute one, Chewy Godinez Jr. Like my beanie. He is. <laughs> like he's wearing beanie. his brand new beanie. He's the co-owner of a nice Old Car for Fishing Bait and Tackle Shop and Stoked Custom Baits. And like I said, we got a great show today. Um, God, I hope I hope he can get in here. We always got there's there's always technical <laughs> difficulties. Unfortunately, it does happen. So we'll just wait up on Ted. But we're gonna get into a little bit some some interesting news. Um, at the last Catfish Conference in Louisville, Kentucky, they introduced a new. Um, it's not a new. Yeah, Chris is a, the new inductee. They for just changed it. It was like Fisherman of the Year or something, and they changed it. I don't know. Hall you of very Fame. Well. Sorry, I'm not talking to my mic, I don't think. Oh, was it? They changed the title of the award, right? It's Tara with an E, by the way. That's okay. Mark, but we don't, we won't hold it on you. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't ask so, me to so spell last your last name. A <laughs> couple <laughs> weeks ago, I was real excited. You guys were up for some awards. Did, yeah. anything, did anything happen? Uh, well, we didn't win yeah. any of the awards. No, nope. yeah. but I thought the one we were gonna win, we didn't win. Um, I thought Tara would win all of hers, obviously. Um, but what I was saying is, Chris was inducted into the uh, Golden Whisker Awards Hall of Fame for catfishing. Chris Flores, Muddy River Catfishing. Nice. So, congratulations, congratulations. congratulations. To Chris Flores. That's Palmetto Cats, Kevin, and Chris Flores. He's a New Mexican uh, cat fisherman. He's been doing YouTube a long time. He has over 100,000 subscribers. Well-deserved. Uh, he's put in his due diligence. He's put in his time. And uh, What award did he get? He's in the Hall of Fame for the Golden Whisker Awards. They just started a couple years ago. Um, so far, it's been Steve Douglas. Steve Douglas. Um, Chris Flores. And, and the uh, guy we had on our podcast. Oh. Scott. Yes. Yep, Epic Catfish. Epic Catfish. Epic Catfish yeah. um, was the other one. Was Mark with her? Mark, were you there at CatCon? I don't think Mark went. He didn't go? No, I don't think Mark went. So, so there's a, a Hall of Fame for catfishing now, is what you're telling well, me? Well, for yeah. the Golden Whisker Awards. It's what a, is the Golden Whisker Award? That's the thing we were nominated for for YouTube. Okay, so it's like a YouTube video yeah, award. Yeah, an okay. award. So Thank yeah, you. it's done Tim, on that. Tim Scott. Tim Scott. That's that's the name we were looking for. Mm -hmm. So, Chris Flor, he's got a lot of videos. Which Mark was which there. one did he win the oh. award for? Yeah, I think it's just all overall. like overall views and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. he's just voted or overall because, badass. Yeah, effort. Yep. Yeah, I get that. 
Yep. He's awesome. Hoping, he really was. I was hoping Ted would be here by now. Yeah, I know. Ted, if you're watching, you got to get, get get to me or call me or uh, message me <laughs> so we can get you in here. But spring's around the corner. Yeah, it we is. have uh, We can cover the kind of the stuff we do at the end now and kind of get through that. But um, people are starting to put boats for sale now. People are yeah, starting to get their fish and stuff ready. People are taking their boats out of storage. Yep. And the snow is kind of starting to melt here, but now we're snowing again. So it's like a mixed emotions kind of a day. Uh, the next couple of days is going to snow as well, unfortunately. Yeah. But and it is warming up big time. But the snow should preserve the ice. It, it will. If you, I put all my ice fishing stuff away. It will. I don't I have care. Not. It's still all loaded on my car. I have not. All I have is catfishing on my mind. I got my new reels on my new rods. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I got, I'm starting to get some stuff for catfishing. I need, uh, I don't need much. I have plenty. See, this is a great time of year to yeah, like, target pan fish and like four or five feet of water on top it of is. weed beds and it's fun it's fun like if you got a little one to take out it's non-stop oh, yeah. action dan we should get wyatt out like i drove by where me, me where and wyatt are going guys. to north dakota next weekend can nice. you talk about who wyatt is because nobody knows Wyatt's my uh five-year-old son he's an animal he's fun he, he loves, loves to fish he loves going. yep he loves the bait store He's got a boat. <laughs> so he, he's got a confused attitude toward this place because I fortunately am pro staff. So if I need something, we just grab it. So my son's kind of got that attitude. <laughs> if anyone knows uh, Ted Allenbecker's number, if you could give him a uh, call or a text message or something. <laughs> he hasn't read my message in 13 minutes. So, so my, my son will run run his motorcycle in here, stuff a few bobbers in his motorcycle trunk, and then ride out. Yeah, had, <laughs> yeah. I tail it yeah. out of here. And then I got to take him back, and that's when we – it's a good learning lesson, I guess, <laughs> either way. But I don't know. I'm excited. We're going to North Dakota. We're going to target walleye in uh, southern North Dakota. And if they're not nice. there, then we got perch spots and whatever. We're I'm sure you'll catch fun. plenty of fish. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean fish. Yeah, some good fishing out there. The pressure out there is so minimal compared to how many fish they have. Like their pressure is obviously in the Glacier Lakes and it's like South Dakota and stuff. There's pressure, but there's so many fish. And, there's so many lakes that oh people, tons like it's pothole century. Yeah, yeah, like, and a I, lot of those potholes have fish too. Yeah, which they makes do. It really unique. So. Yeah, the only problem is getting permission on some of them. Some of the really, really good ones in South Dakota, you need to get permission. Right. We're in North Dakota, so most of it's going to be public. Yeah, that's and nice. Obviously, we're going to have to bring snowmobiles because of the snow and travel mm -hmm. on stuff. And the South Dakota and North yep. Dakota lakes is almost impossible. Yeah, like it's you, tough. You have to have a plow. Or My friend brought a bobcat out there right. one time to get their way out. I mean, to the private lakes in South Dakota. Right. Which is epic. Yep. Yeah, I used to live out there. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy ice fishing then. It's kind of ruined uh, South Dakota. So if I'm in, I live in Minnesota. Pheasant hunting. I, yeah. You know, so if I'm going to drive three hours north, what do I got? Mille Lacs? If I drive three hours west, I have a plethora of just packed lakes. Right, with a lot of fish. So many that are not as pressured as around here. It's, right. I don't know. I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'd I say mean, go, go north, don't I'm go I'm just west. in too much of like get ready for fishing mind. Like we're going on, we have a trip in a few weeks. Well, quite a few weeks. I haven't been anywhere what? north this year, like anything. Add him I don't, to the I don't see him in the stream. We don't see his, his, his image. Yep. It's black. So maybe if he leaves and comes back, Ted, can you, if you can hear us, can you leave and come back in? I don't know why uh, it's um early hope Ted doesn't give up. He's a yeah. So that's the problem. It did show him in here, but we don't see him. Will someone please? Oh, he needs to innate. He needs to allow camera access on Streamyard. That's what's going on. So Ted, can we? We can't even hear him, can we? No. No. If if you go to your um allowances, you need to make sure your camera and. Your video and audio is allowed to be used by the app. Otherwise, it will not work. Will you please take this camera off of me? It's just bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there he is right there. There, there he is. is. There he is. Right. There we go. Yeah. Got there. <laughs> there he is. Sorry, guys. No, that's okay. You're fine. 
we, I had we, a sign up saying that that uh, you guys would let me uh, enter or whatever. So yeah, we well you're in now. That's the most important thing. That's the big deal. Yeah, yeah welcome in, Ted. Deal. So what? Ted, if yeah. Ted, we're gonna I'm gonna introduce you a little bit, kind of what I know okay. about you. Um, okay. So I've met I've met Ted a, a couple times at different conferences, and he's been a speaker. Uh, especially the one last year really got really got me uh, really got me going. He uh, he has a really good mind when it comes to fish patterns, especially flathead catfish. And I know uh, Ted can talk about his other angling skills he has, but he also doesn't only target catfish. Um, I like we, that wall in the background. Yeah, we he's got some good fish up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. But he is a master presenter in my mind. Um, he's a great presenter. There's a lot of people watching him at the Louisville uh, or at Kansas City. And that was a really, really, really good presentation. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Um, maybe we got you into fishing a little bit, and then we can get into the depths of the old flathead catfish. Sure. Uh, I've been fishing ever since I can remember. I, I do fish a little bit of everything. The, the fish on the wall, uh, the top left is my daughter Jaden's two-pound line class world record northern. The one on the right is my daughter Jory's four-pound line class world record. The uh, muskie on the bottom is my two-pound line class IGFA world record muskie. So that's those fish. Um, I was weaned fishing catfish, though. And I always go back to my, actually, flatheads are, are probably my favorite target fish. Um, I wish we had a little bigger fish on average up here. You know, we have the Sioux River, the Jim River, the Missouri River, but the Mer Missouri River is a little iffy. You know, up here, if you see a 50-pound fish, it's... It's a big fish for a river that's 20 feet across, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, right. but anyway, there's a, there's good numbers and, and they're fun waters. And um, to me, fishing flats is a lot like hunting deer. I mean, if you have to plan it. And I know some people, uh, you know, that, that fish catfish, they'll, they'll say, well, flatheads are too hard or they're too picky or, or whatever. And in reality... Uh, the problem is most of the people have, have started by fishing channels or blues. And while they are their own fish, a flathead is a completely different animal, completely different animal. And I know that some people, you know, God bless them, I uh, have bodies of water that are stuffed with flatheads, so it's pretty easy pickings, but that's not the case up here. And even if you're fortunate enough to have a body of water like that. If you want to target the bigger fish, you really need to understand the species and how they work, how they want to feed um, certain items like uh, the high site fidelity, the deal period that most people don't even realize exist. But if you can understand those and the three structures that flatheads use, you know, the fish have a reason to fear you. They really do, because then you can follow those fish movements on a 24-hour basis and target them. Without that, you're just throwing bait in the water and the fish are moving around you, basically. So mm -hmm. where do you want to go from there? <laughs> well, I think, um, what do you guys think? You want to start at maybe something about site fidelity? Some A lot of people yeah. aren't familiar with site yeah. fidelity. Um, maybe talk a little bit about that and get into that. Maybe a lot about that, Ted. I <laughs> I couldn't even, I was trying to figure out what you said. Let's okay. hear about uh, it. Sure. Uh, high site fidelity, uh, to explain it real easily, and then I'll get into a little more detail, is the fish like to return to the same area. Okay. And that's just not daily or whatever. It's seasonally. It's everything. Uh, mm -hmm. There's been research done. Uh, well, the St. Lawrence River, there's two tributaries that were coming into there. And they tagged uh, a bunch of younger flatheads, smaller, like 8 to 15s, and in the summer. And then they follow them out, and, and they went into the bigger river, most of them, to winter. Some went upstream, some went down. This is kind of a system like the Sioux River, the Jim River, and the Missouri River in our state. Okay, you got two major tributaries dumping into the big river, about 50 miles apart. Anyway, in the spring, those fish went back into the same tributaries that they came out of, and better yet, they went back to the same log jams and same riprap if it still existed, no way. right back to it, okay? That's high site fidelity. Uh, they have a home, they have a territory. And if you understand that, 
you can pick your water really pretty easily because the fish, let's just say you're fishing Milford Reservoir or whatever, you want to fish flats, and there's a certain bay where the flats have been being caught, you know, they've been caught for 10 years consistently in that area of the lake. Well, they're going to still be there in that area of the lake. There's something there that's drawing that population. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you'd want to start, obviously. But then it gets, oh, well, okay, let's just stay with that for a minute. Also, on the high site fidelity, to let you know how, how crucial that is, uh, the state of Missouri did a, a tracker on the Missouri River, okay? And they did it down there intentionally because it's wide open. The fish could move 200 miles upstream. They could move 200 miles downstream before they got interfered with with a dam or, or blocked, okay? Ted, can I hang you up there? Yes. They, are they more likely to go upstream or more likely to go downstream? Believe it or not, 50-50. Right. Okay. It's going to de it's going to depend on where the holding area is and what is offered upstream or what's offered downstream. It can sure. go 50-50. And that fidelity holds true anywhere for flathead catfish. I mean, we have multiple flatheads tagged with uh, telemetry tags here in Minnesota. And in our workshop groups, we've talked about how some flatheads will go through locks every year and come back up the Minnesota River. Um, that's obviously a big a big haul for most flatheads won't go that far. But yep. it just goes to show that that flathead came back every year to the same area that's cool. every single year, which makes you wonder, like, that's just one fish that's tagged. And, you know, and like Ted, um, Ted said, I mean, it's a thing. P fish are going to come back. Those fish that you see Jake catch are coming back to that same structure every single year. Nope. That's just, yep. and it, it, like he said, if the structure is still there and if it matches what they want, I mean, Yep. There's, there's a, they have like a mental GPS in their head every hmm. and every year, and obviously you know our flatheads here winter pretty heavily, um, yep, and so they winter, they go to their wintering hole, and then the spring, uh, Ted will probably get into this a little bit, but they're they're on the move a lot more, they're feeding, they're not sitting in their summer spot, and that's why I love uh, Ted. That's why I love pre-spawn so much for flatheads because you can sit on like a sharp current seam where you know those fish are going to be moving, and you can sit there. That's kind of the times of the year when you can sit there all day and catch fish um, when you know those fish are coming back from the, from the wintering. Yeah, and, okay. uh, and I've, uh, I've always gone up cause I always think they're going to go up. I had never even thought of down. Yeah. Okay. They just, they just go where they like to be. It doesn't, I don't think they, I, would you agree? They don't really care if they're going up or down as long as it's the right spot. Uh, it seems like in the spring when you get a little heavier flow in the rivers, they'll, they'll follow the heavier flow up a little bit. But, yep. but when they, when they're talking, you know, the summer patterns, uh, they'll go wherever the food is, wherever the cover is. They, yep. they don't really care up or downstream, you know? Yeah, that so. is, uh, I don't know if that's species specific. I, for, um, I don't know what the studies are for like river musky and stuff. Do, um, they don't really winter, obviously. They don't go into torpor like flatheads, but they obviously change their diet a little bit in the winter. Um, sure. But do they, they, do you think they do that same thing in smaller segments? Um, they, they are territorial, uh, winter, well, all year to a, to a certain degree, they will right. move through, we'll say the lake or move through the river according to where the forage is going. Okay. Because they still have to eat in the winter, whereas the flatheads, they slow up considerably. Um, the muskies will move, but once they settle, we'll say into a summer ground, if you raise a muskie in the morning, you know, but he doesn't strike, you can go back at sunset and cast that same area and he'll be within about an acre and a half, two acre area. Okay. So, so it's kind of similar. Yeah. Similar. But like you said, flatheads and channel cats are just, they're, com and blues, they're just, com the flat is just a completely different animal. And that's when you tell people you catfish and well, you, they're nasty bottom feeders. Well, they're an apex predator. They're not nasty bottom no, feeders. They're not bottom feeders. At they're all. a unique no unique and um i know we, we probably won't get into wintering flatheads a whole lot I, it's it's not really controversial here in minnesota because we got the season closed now in minnesota during the winter which is a blessing our group actually got that passed which is huge good for you um <laughs> but um yeah. um what was i gonna say shit <laughs> that covers it hey, yeah we, uh, we can let ted keep anyways. talking yeah, yeah. I well, I we, we, we don't have to get into the wintering very heavy i think you were somewhere along that line yeah yeah 
it's different everywhere. So you can't really, you can say one thing and somebody in another state will say something else. So it's, it is what it is. And we, yeah. we, we got it where it needed to be here. That was the main thing that I was worried about. That's good. That is good. Yeah. So you, well. We got a pretty good uh, setup here now. We got one over 30 a day. That's you got, Yeah. That's kind of what we did too. I think it's one over. Ted, where are you 20. at? Uh, I'm in Beaver Creek, but I work more in South Dakota than I do here. Okay. What is yeah. ours? One over I'm 28? I'm in Minnesota, but, but I'm from South Dakota. Sure. Are we one over 28, Ted, here? Uh, uh, one over 24, I believe. Okay. On, on flats. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. It's good. Yep. But there's a, most of the people here, Ted, so there's no limb lining, obviously, and no jug lining and stuff like that. Yep. And 95% of the people that catch catfish here release them anyways, mm -hmm. which is great. But you still obviously need that protection. Yep. Well, it just makes us feel good anyway. You know, yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a feel. It is important. It is a feel gooder. That's for damn sure about that. Ted, there's nothing wrong with a good meat run, though, right? Oh no, no, absolutely not. I I like eating fish. I eat yeah, fish. me too. Uh, yeah. the, the thing I like about um, restrictions like that or regulations like that, myself, is, is like we'll say in the spring when you're talking. I mean, the spring's a good bite on any cat, right? I mean, they're they're in there and they're moving, and you can pile them up and you can catch them. And that's when I think that regulation is important, at least up here. Yep. They get pulled up below the low head dams, you know, and, and a guy that, well, a guy that doesn't know what he's doing can become a local hero because he just caught a half a dozen 30 pound flats. Sure. That's yeah. how it is here where they went through too. I mean, yeah, yeah. same and, thing. And, that, and that's just the deal where that's where that regulation is important. You can't get somebody piling up and loading his pickup up. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. With yep. big fish. But he can keep one if he wants. Damn you know, right. That's fine. <laughs> and you can keep the smaller ones, and you can keep the smaller ones too. And I, I don't have a problem with that at all. I mean, the I'm bigger ones got more meat, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ted. I'm a sure. protect. I'll throw them back. <laughs> but I, I still thought it was a good joke. <laughs> yeah, so we can keep yeah. continuing on. For, uh, is, how much left you got on the fidelity? Um, well, the one thing that, that was kind of cool, I was talking about the Missouri River, that the Missouri uh, GFP down there, they came out with a statement, they didn't verify it, but they said what they found out was that they thought it would be possible or could be possible to actually create a trophy fishery on 25 mile sections of the Missouri River, of the wide open Missouri River, because of the way these fish were moving within certain areas and returning to the certain areas uh -huh. and everything else. I find that kind of amazing. I mean, when that's you're talking a river, they could run 300 miles if they wanted. So, awesome. That's true, uh, too. I never even... So you're saying there's one trophy fish every 25 miles of pretty much a stretch? Uh, See, I think well, that's they... different in the Minnesota River. I bet I get one trophy yeah. fish every... That's not uh... what he's saying. No, no, no. No, I'm, no, no. no, I'm saying they, they could put restrictions and develop a trophy fishery. You know, for multiple oh, trope for, tro for fish to grow big into that section sure. in that section because yeah yep because they're, for some reason they're there. returning to that area so if you protect them and they'll stay there you know like how much have you fished the minnesota river here we're about 75 yards from it right now all right oh geez <laughs> yeah, which uh, makes oh, it about uh, 275 yards from my favorite spot. There, there you go. Yeah, I actually I've only fished it once, and and I had a good time and I caught some fish. I usually go up north to the Red River uh, for channels when I travel, or I go down to Santa Cooper uh, for lakes for blues and stuff. But some good spots. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah we got a red. We got a Red River trip planned. I I started catfishing on the Red River, so my my heart is on the Red. I'll just say that. And yeah, pretty special yeah, my, fishery. My, my first first twenty five pound channel cat was fishing with Stu Mackay up there. So really? Years, years ago, yeah. I used What's to your biggest channel cat? Uh, twenty nine and a half. That's a good one. Yeah, about a, a half a pound away from Luke's Mount. Or... Hey. Yeah. 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 I'm lo I'm looking for the thirty to get my replica. Yeah, my God, me too. That'd be nice. <laughs> I haven't quite hit it though. No, you couldn't do it to yourself to mount the twenty-nine and a half, could you? No, 
No. No. Then I'd have to lie to you and say it was 30. I know. <laughs> but most so people would. You're, you're honest. Most people would say Stretch it's 30. Stretch that mount out a little for yeah. me, would you? Yeah. No, it's great. There's no sense in that. It was fun to catch, you know. I got a good feeling this year's the year, though, Ted, for my 30. I, I just got a good feeling. I have a feeling it's not because it's like the fifth time he's talked about it. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going yeah. to uh, we're going to Mendota this spring. Oh, that's again. a fun bike. I got my twenty seven two out of there. Tara got a twenty five two out of there. Yep. Yep. Um, I've caught some bigger fish on the red, not bigger fish. I've caught a lot of twenty plusers on the red, obviously, but yeah. never caught the. I went to Lockport. I never got a thirty up there. He sure is name dropping a lot of lakes. <laughs> what? Hey, there's, okay. They're no secret. They're no secret. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, we're going to awesome. try it. But um, we can get back into Flathead. Sorry, I get in the channel cat tear yeah. once in a while. We got we to get back into Ted's power of three. And, and Dan really yeah. wants. Yeah, Dan likes the power see, of three. See, Ted, I was okay. in Kansas City this year. I don't know if yep. I met or not. Probably not because I was working Luke's booth one year <laughs> he's like man you really got to watch this seminar from ted like this is the one thing you can't miss so i'm stuck working selling luke stickers <laughs> <laughs> and i can yeah. i can see luke and tara over there watching her seminar and i'm like mother <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, 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 was flat, I was flattered that they came over and sat down I was. so i yeah. has I fishing it. took care of my booth and i i think i caught the last 15 20 minutes but okay yeah. <laughs> anyway well, well you know what yeah your fishing success, you know, guys, is up to you. It really is. It's just, you know, it's the decisions but that you make. You got to have good information, right? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't do any good. You know, I, I, uh, I've got kind of a, a thing that I try to tell people. It's just like you should really worry more about your presentation than worrying about catching fish. Because if you get the presentation right, the fish will come. That's a fact. If you don't so, get yo. the presentation right, you're screwed. You know, and if the fish cannot find your bait you not only will not get bit you cannot you know so the whole thing is putting it back on you to make the right decisions to present to more fish you know it's a numbers game you ever looked at it that way Fishing absolutely again you know 100 percent yeah if you, yeah you know, it, more lines it, in the water the more fish you catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay well, i look at it differently. <laughs> you know if, if you got whatever circumstances you can't control on a day there there's only so many fish that will actually bite right i mean right. Mm-hmm. they got their jaw shut yep we'll just say we'll just say one out of ten well so if you present to 10 fish you've got a chance at hooking one if you present to 22 and on up the line so the whole trick is to really hit high percentage areas you know and with flats it's more important you know especially if you're fishing during the day because during the day they pretty much lock up at least in the summer, you got to put it on your nose. And that's where, like, the high sight fidelity comes in and the deal period. The deal period can, well, it'll make or break you. How, how many of you, you guys, I think you probably have, I used, I, I really like fishing flathead where you take a bucket, you put it in the mud, and you put your butt down on it and sit there and fish, right? And during the day, or let's just say right before sunset, you get a you get on a nice log jam, okay? It's buckled up against a bridge piling or whatever, and we're gonna knock them dead. And so you set up, and sunset, you get a bite, and this goes on for a couple hours. You get a bite, you catch one, you catch two, you catch a couple, okay? And I'm gonna bet you've had this happen. And then at midnight, one o'clock, they quit, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, God, I thought we were gonna really knock them dead, and they quit. They quit biting. And I got a buddy that, you know, he's on the cell phone quite a bit. And when that happens, he gets on the phone and he's calling somebody five miles down the river. And, you know, he's going, well, yeah, they, they quit on us. We haven't had a bite for an hour. Well, and this is where flathead guys have to change what they're doing. The fish did not quit. They simply moved, you know. And that comes into the three different structures that they hold. You know, when you, when you put your butt down in front of a log jam, you're fishing a staging structure. Mm-hmm. That's where they're sitting during the day. Now, it doesn't have to be a log jam. It can be big riprop. It can be rock, rock piles. You know, it can be a cutout. 
undercut banks, whatever, but where they're, where they're piling up during the day just to rest. And you can catch them there if you drop it on their nose. But when the sun goes down, they come out and they move around those areas, and then they move up river to a feeding platform. And that is documented. And people is don't it, do this, and they're losing half of their fishing time. Ted, I'm sorry. Uh, is that always up? About <laughs> 60, they, 70% of the time, they'll go up. Yes. I'm thank down. you. Yeah. Yep. 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 And the other thing with this, when they make the move, the flats do go to shallow water, and I'm going to explain why it makes perfect sense. Okay? It's not just hearsay. They want to feed in under nine feet of water. Okay? So don't be throwing your, you know, don't waste your green your green air out on 20-foot holes at 2 in the morning because you might have one coming through, but that's not where they are. They're probably sitting under your feet, you know. <laughs> and... And the reason they want to be under nine foot, think about it. Look at a flathead. Look at his head structure, his eye position, his jaw. He's an undercut jaw, right? Just like a, just like a muskie, like a northern, like a bass. He wants to strike up, okay? Mm -hmm. And his eyes are high, all right? Now, if you picture, if you were a flathead and you're swimming in 50 foot of water and there's a shad two foot under the surface, how the hell are you going to catch him? But if he's... If you're a foot over the, off the bottom, you're an eight foot of water, and he's three foot under the surface, he's only two foot above your head, and he can't get away from you. See what I mean? You can come up under him and take him. Whereas if he's in 20 foot of water, a flathead not only can't catch him very well, he can't even find him. And so the nine foot water, take, take it to heart, it's for real. And, and if you go deeper, you might catch one moving. Okay, but anyway, so we've done that. The fish have quit midnight, and they quit, right? So, geez, what do you do? But then you sit there, and what, about 5 o'clock in the morning, sun's coming up, and, and they get a few more bites, right? I mean, they start biting again. Well, they didn't start biting again. They're just coming back to their staging area off of the feeding platform. Mm -hmm. So you start getting your same bites again, see? But... If you move, if you if you actually research your water and you know where they're traveling and going, you can follow. Just like taking care of a herd of cattle. You can walk them out of that staging structure, up into the feeding platform, and back to the staging structures again over a period of a night. And you don't have to go to sleep at two in the morning. You know? Is there a is there a rule of how far they go from up to their, a mile? Up to a mile? Up to a mile. And you want to use that. Guys don't do this either. Well, absolutely. That's why I asked. You know? <laughs> but, but I mean, but the, like, you, can, you can take flats off a structure you can't get to if you understand what they're doing. I mean, sure. like they're, up here, we've got private land on, on both sides of the river kind of thing. And a lot of time there's log jams down there and they're posted, no fishing, can't get there. But it's 200 yards down, okay, from, from another smaller staging structure. And I got a feeding platform below a little low head up here about, you know, a quarter of a mile. Well, those fish are going to come out of that big log jam and come right by me. And this yeah. is where the deer hunting mentality comes in. Yep. You're not going to yeah. shoot the deer while they're sleeping. Yep. You're no. going to shoot them in between sleeping and feeding. Yep. Yep. I like exactly. that, Ted. You're a fucking get genius. Him, get him on the move. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and it does move. work. I mean, like, seriously works. You just yeah. have to be patient with it. It doesn't mean you're going to catch 100 fish every day, but it means it'll be putting your bait in front of fish anyway. You know? Is there a certain thing you do to separate the small fish from the big fish? Because I know you're, uh, you're doing a numbers game, right? So you're just hoping yep. to get a big one at that point. Yep. Well, is what I'm doing, yeah. I'm trying to put the bait where I believe a big one will be, and, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the theory or three or whatever, but uh, it's a... It's a, we live uh, by the strategy. theory of three. I do. <laughs> I do. No, we do. Oh, do you? Okay. We do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you put, it's just like back to the deer thing. If you put water, food, and cover in one spot, the big buck's going to take over. Yep. Okay. A big flathead is going to kick smaller fish out of an area if he wants it. And if, if it's good, if it's cover, easy access to a feeding platform, good cover during the day, all that type of thing, he's going to take it, you know. 
So you try to put your bait, comes back to the number, you know, put your bait where the big fish should be. Doesn't mean he will be, but where should he be? No, they go back. Like, yeah. Yeah. Luke, when he goes with John Kimball, John Kimball goes to every big fish he's ever caught, and they go right back there, and they hit all the bends and go back. And our our river here is so dependent on water level, too. I mean, there's a lot of of years we fish the spot, and the next year it's either so low or so high. And it kind of changes the the whole what's going on with that spot. Well, we why sure. was, Let's why tackle sure the genius, there. Ted. Water level? Pardon? Water level? Water level. Um, the fish can't leave the water one way or the other. They're going to be there. The only, <laughs> the only, the only difference it'll the make on, on us is how far they're going to move in the spring. Like yeah. if we have a low spring or whatever, you know, they're, they're probably not going to travel, you know, 25 miles up. They're going to find a good hole and they're going to stay there sure um you get high water obviously you're going to get more fish movement that's just the way it is with any species pretty much you know but but they're still there so um, i bet it goes back to a numbers game at that point where yep. there's more water yep. unless yep. you know same amount of fish but more water so yeah i always yep. uh, so your, your average has got to go down my uh one of my fishing partners john he's been fishing the river forever now he's kind of like you've been doing it a long time caught a lot of big fish a lot of huge fish. His thing is always, if fishing's tough, or in general, he'll always try to find the first structure near a deeper hole. Yep. Oh, and sure. It, it usually pays off. We I, the, One of the best flatted nights I ever had was by one of the deeper holes in the Carver Stretch on the first good structure there. And we caught like seven or eight flatheads just sitting there listening to music. I feel like that's yep. my goal every time I go out. <laughs> <laughs> Go find structure next to a hole. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's but now I know elements together. from a hole. Same thing. <laughs> food, co- food cover, you know, the whole bit. That's the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. That spot is upriver from the hole, too. So, yeah. Yep. That's on to something. <laughs> 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 yeah. He just so, giggles. So, we're at, um, you were talking about um, the time of day when the fish are moving and you got to catch them in there. And yeah, I think you kind of ended it is when if you stay in a spot all night, that bite will pick up again in the morning, typically. Sure. Normally will for flats because they're, if, if there was, say, a half a dozen flats in a log jam you're sitting in front of, you, you, you lip, lip burned a couple of them, you're going to have three or four more come back. You're probably going to get a couple more bites. Yeah, and that's my, that's my thing when I flathead fish is in my mind for – so pre-spawn – I have my pre-spawn spots for different water levels. I have them written on a spreadsheet. It says when the water's this level for pre-spawn, I can go fish these spots and they've produced. And those are the that's the only time of year when I'm fishing flatheads, which I do quite a bit, where I don't feel like I need to move because those fish keep moving through. Like he said, they're moving a lot more in the spring. When the yep, water's high, yep. And then yep. in the when the summer comes, like he said. If I don't get something when I know the bait's in front of their face, I'm getting that bait. You learn spots throughout the summer, and you can figure out how close you can cast to a log jam before you lose your your rig. Yeah. Yeah. And you know kind of where the fish are. And if you don't get bit in a half hour, 45 minutes in the day, throwing it on their face, either they're not going to bite right there or you're not close enough or you just can't. That's when I move spots then. Sure, sure. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting game. People, uh, I mean – you make it sound simple. I mean, it, to it, it's it's fishing, so it can always be challenging. Yeah, but it's as challenging as you want to make it, you know. And, I, and that, it's and it and it's a lot more flathead fishing to be very successful at it. I don't. I wouldn't say I'm a great flathead fisherman. I'm good at it on certain days, but there's times they stump me and they fool me, and uh, people don't people underestimate how difficult flathead fishing can be. And I always tell people. You will go walleye if you. It's always the walleye guys, and I'm a walleye guy. But there, I was like, "Yo, you fish for catfish are so easy to catch." I was like, "All right, you go fish for flatheads for a day. I'm gonna go fish for walleye for a day, and we'll see who catches more fish." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Not to I them. Like, though, I, I like walleyes too, but I've never found them. I don't know. See, Extremely I've taken guys out fun. catfishing where they've caught fish on their first night and they're pumped right but then i've had guys where i've taken out six times and they finally land into one 
And it's so much more exciting mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. Oh, but they yeah. put their time in, and usually it's a big one at that point, right? But, make make yeah. them work for it a little bit. Yeah. Ted, you'll get, a, yeah. you'll get a kick out of this one. So me and Tara started fishing together about two years ago, and she wasn't really into the river fishing. She hadn't really done it and never had the opportunity to do it until we met. And she didn't like it. She didn't like the She didn't That's like it. That's not true. I'll, I'll go to the mm -hmm. message right now. I saw now. the message. There's so yeah. many bugs. It's not yes. true. I just had not had, a, had the opportunity. So I was like, Luca, I don't know the river. Yeah. And she it's, said, uh, I, I need to, didn't you need a flathead for Wham? Yeah. She, need, <laughs> she needed a flathead for her Women Anglers of Minnesota contest. Oh, and I was sure. like, it, it was pre spawn. <laughs> and I went to, uh, so, you can envision this spot, Ted. It was kind of cool. So it's an outside bend. Below it's a ton of wood on a cut bank. And on the top side, there's a little, yeah. just a tiny little lip that comes out with a little, that's kicking up a huge seam. And then there's like a dead pool behind it with the wood below. Okay. And, and I was like, she's like, how do I fish this? I was like, I'm going to throw mine along the, the cut slack just to get out of the way. And I said, I want you to drop. We had the boat right on the seam. I <laughs> yeah. said, drop the boat straight below the boat, right on this fast edge seam. And I would say like 10 minutes later, her rods went, Zzz! <laughs> I was horrified. <laughs> it was like a 30 something pound flathead. And she's like, she didn't know how to hold them. So then she figured that out. Now she does it like nothing, but there was a kind of a fun story getting her first flathead two summers ago. She, uh, she was hooked after that. We'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it does get you that way. Once you oh, hook yeah. a nice fish, you got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And I've got that same spot's been it's a really good high water spot and medium low water. Yep. Dan's thinking about where it is right now. I don't care. No. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of, no, I'm thinking about the first flathead that got me hooked. Actually, it was Dan RNC took me out. He was showing pictures on Facebook, just catfish, catfish, catfish. And I've lived that next to this river my entire life. And I'd never caught one. And I was so pumped. But yeah, he yeah. put me in, he said same thing. We had inside corner, just a huge pile of logs. He's like, drop it down. I said, what? I know. <laughs> like, are you fucking nuts? He goes, do it. <laughs> that 10 minutes, just my yep. rod was banging. Yep. You, get, you guys ever vertical the log jams? Oh, oh yes. yeah. I get my, yeah. I'll put my boat in a log, yes. in, in a tree, Park and go the straight boat down. on top of the log. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and straight down. Yeah. Ted, that's when yeah. I bring out the extra heavies with the cinch drag. See, but I would like your professional opinion on this, Ted, because okay. that means that we're working on the backside of a long jab. And if we can, but everyone that's ever told me is you want to fish the top of a log jam. Why so, are you fishing the backside? I don't fish the back. Well, if you're if you're parking on the log jam, I'm just fishing the middle. Then you're, of it. Then you're not fishing the front. Oh, it's no, right in. Oh, no. you're dropping your anchor. Okay, here's how you fish log. There we go. Right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> on a river, okay, is what the, here's the way I do it anyway. It works really good because I don't want to spook fish. It's a smaller river, so what I'll do is get out, get, get the boat in, and I run upstream first. Okay, past everything that I want to fish. Just ignore it. Go all the way up. That'll give the logs time, the water time to settle down. Okay. Are you are you just trying to fake out the fish at that point? Like you're well, acting yeah. like you're just driving kind, back. Kinda, kinda. I don't yeah. want to be pulling up against the current with my motor half yeah, throttle. I got up it. Love and it. pushing water up and making the logs bang around. You know, because because it's going to push them back underneath, and that's going to take me twice as long to get them out. Right. But. So you go up past all the stuff you want, and then you come back, and as you get, say, you're 50 yards off the front of the dam, you know, you, you either kill your big motor, put your troller down, or you idle it down, whatever you got to do. He's floating right and up when to you that get, log. When you get 50 feet in front of it, you drop your anchor, and then you rope your boat back to the log jam. Yep. So you're almost your back end's touching that wood. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, I've done yep, that. Exactly. And if you have to, tie the back end off under a snag that's hanging out or whatever. And then you, fish ver put put heavy weight on and fish vertical. You don't want it to be swing, swinging around. In right. Insurance. You're gonna like put eight this ounces one. Ounces on and drop it. One more story time with Luke. Ted. How many ounces? <laughs> uh, depending on the current, I'll go anywhere from four ounces to eight ounces. To make it so it doesn't move around. Yep. You don't want the bait moving around because he's gonna hang out. I got a good story, Ted. This is a good one. Okay. So took my friend Melissa out three summers ago in my old boat, or maybe four summers ago. Um, and I was side scanning some stuff I hadn't fished. And there was this perfect log laying on this cut bank going straight down to the bottom in about 10 feet of water, nine feet of water. 
And when I side scanned it, I saw that flathead underneath the base of that log, right where it should be. Yep. And I went by it. I was like, we're going to go buy this fish. And I went about 60 yards. And I threw my anchor up on the bank and I just floated back to that log sticking in the water. I put my back end. This is a true story. I marked this fish and I knew it was huge. I'm like, that's a big flathead sitting under that log. And I don't mark a lot of flatheads under logs, but once in a while I do if I get the good read. Yep. And I put a bullhead on. I was like, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, we're going to get right on top of this fish. It didn't know we were there. And I was just letting line out. Tied it to the side of my boat, put the bullhead down. It was about an eight-inch bullhead. Dropped it straight below the boat. It had to have been right on its face. I set the rod down in the rod holder. It got just obliterated instantly. The moment I set that rod down, it was 42 pounds. <laughs> I mean, nice job, dude. Yeah, like he's saying, you, you can drive by a spot and then float back to it and fish. You, you know, that's the thing. When you're fishing like that, you know your bait's in the right spot. Yep. Yep, you do. And you, and you're not, you don't have to go through so much brush because half the time when you're reeling out of a snag, for people that aren't familiar with flathead fishing, a lot of the time you get hung up on the way in if you don't burn fast enough and then you have a chance of losing your bait. And yep. some people reel too slow. Like if you're on top of it, like he said, use a weight that's not going to move, put a bait on it, drop it down. You're going to know pretty quick if there's a fish there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't take long. <laughs> no. yep. They pick it up real quick and they'll hit. I've had... I'll tell you, do any of you ever remember Tony Dean? No, I do not. No? Like, okay. he had a TV show. And yeah, a he did. Show yeah. Here yeah. in South Dakota. Uh, a number of years ago, I've, we lost him, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. But I had him on a, we were doing a video thing on the Jim River doing flat edge. And this is a funny ending. But we pulled up to a log dam, just like we're talking about. Middle of the day, because we're filming. And Tony's just... He's full of it. He's having fun. We drop him down. He sets his rod on his lap, right? Like laying across his lap, and it's hanging down straight over the boat. And he's talking. He's interviewing me a little bit. His cameraman's <laughs> up on the bank. And all of a sudden, his rod just goes wham, and the butt goes straight up in the air and straight down in the water. <laughs> and, 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 and he didn't he didn't break stride at all. He just stopped. He looked at me, and he goes, no, that was a bite, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a bite and, and the guy he was great i mean he didn't get mad nothing it was just part of it in fact he loved it because it was great footage i mean yeah. rod, <laughs> rod went by foot straight up in the air you know and it was just like poof but he he, he kept a great face and it just that was a bite right <laughs> it was perfect it was perfect yeah people that if you haven't flathead fish guys the when if you're running a live bait with a clicker or not a clicker, they the bite can be very, very violent. Yeah. I love that. The best part is mm-hmm. when you bring a first person out, and you, the line, you know, your line's tapping, tapping, the bullheads are on there, like, oh, oh. Yeah. And you're like, no, buddy. No, you'll, you'll, know. you'll know. You'll, you'll know. know. <laughs> you'll know when they bite. And then finally, when that thing just starts <laughs> staring, you're like, there you it's go. Just, <laughs> it's amazing the uh, amount of power that vortex of them slamming their mouth open like that can shoot that bait so hard into their throat. That it like it will shake your boat when they hit it sometimes. Oh yeah, they'll rattle things. They really do. <laughs> it's Big fish pretty amazing. It. Definitely woken me up from a Danny two nap before. <laughs> <laughs> when I get a hit like that, they're like, "How long do I let it go?" I was like, "You don't need to no. let it go anywhere." No. <laughs> I, I was hoping that one get it quick question. before it gets in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun, man. I'm I'm ready to fly that fish with talking like this. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's coming. Quick. It's coming. I'm afraid we're gonna flood out up here, though. We're Ted, are you doing a yeah. you're doing are you doing a seminar here soon? Aren't you? Um. Yeah. Actually, I got two things going here. Uh, the fifteenth of this month, I got Keith Sutton and I did a little article for Catfish Now, and it's just like why we catfish that kind of thing. And anyway, I, uh, nice. Keith's a friend of mine, and, and anyway, I just, I'll just i thank him publicly for helping me out. I'm not a writer. I I got some good ideas, but i not that good on paper, and obviously he's, he helped out with this quite a bit, so making it readable. But it's a good one. That's on the 15th. That's coming out. <clears throat> then March 18th, uh, this will be the fourth year that I've done the opener for game fishing parks in South Dakota here. Um just kind of an opener. It, it's free to the public. And I usually do like four hours worth of seminars in an afternoon. Oh, wow. That's awesome. 
could cover three or four different topics and you know get everybody covered make some friends and drink some coffee and yeah it's, but it's fun it's worth it to me um it's not a money deal at all obviously it's free to the public and gfp pushes it really well and they handle it well they have staff there when we're doing it and helping people out anyway yeah so that's the 18th from noon to four this year and where is that at? at that's at the outdoor campus in sioux falls it's game fish and parks headquarters and how do, if people want to get information on it, where are they going to go to find they that? They go to the Game Fish and Parks uh, website or on Facebook, and they'll have a deal that says programming. You click on a programming link, and it'll take you to where it'll say learn how to fish, learn how to hunt, you know, learn how to camp. You click on that, and then it will list whatever events they have in the upcoming, like, next month. And you That's can awesome. go in there, and you just sign up basically it doesn't cost you anything so that's really cool does minnesota have anything like that on any of their stuff w there's random ones i didn't even know if like that was a thing yeah me neither no they uh it's nothing like that i'm so ted that's pretty much public service for you right oh it is absolutely that's Ted, awesome. you're the man that's awesome you're awesome yeah well i don't know about that i'm i'm old <laughs> <laughs> no come on no no we uh you're, you're spreading the yeah. knowledge of fishing through your goodwill. It's awesome. Fido, settle down, Fido. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I was, uh, yeah, that, that's a freebie for sure. Um, but I was saying how it's, uh, to kind of put a close to what you're talking about is when you think you got fish figured, when you think you got them figured out, they'll fool you, but there's always, there's always that room to learn from someone else. And even if it's someone that's, fished half the years you fished um i've learned a lot from people in my boat um even my friends that don't really know a lot about flathead they're like well we should try this well why should we try that well because of this and then you learn something new that way you learn something got from guys that have been fishing a long time and there's always can there's always something out there that can give you a little bit of an yeah. edge and i think you would agree ted is there's, there's always room for learning especially in the fishing world oh always. absolutely if, if i i love it when i learn something new it yeah just, you know, Another we tool didn't, in the tackle box, you know. We didn't even get into the power of three today. Oh, I know. <laughs> so maybe next time, Ted. Oh, we're going to have you on again, okay. Ted. Okay. We're gonna, please, and, uh, please Ted, how, I, I like it. How do you Good feel time, about so. uh, coming up here to the Minneapolis this summer and jump in the jet boat for uh, for a day and do some flatheading? Jeez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even, even, real quick. Yeah, well let's go let, well, we're gonna look at a couple of your pictures i grabbed from your facebook before you we, we get you out of here dad i'm coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what year is this picture from oh boy that was oh, that was 30 years ago and that fish came out of 18 inches of water you see that wow. quiet water on this right by the shore there yep. yeah, yeah that current scene that was a little low head down and had a bait right right under my armpit pretty much on that seam. That's a hell of oh, a that's awesome. hell of a mustache. Now I, I do have to tell you here, there's a stringer on that fish. But the only reason the stringer's on there is because this is back when we didn't have phones and I had to you were, go to the car and you get were really phone. hungry. They had well, to go in the car to, to get the camera. With the camera, yeah. Put it in the water. <laughs> yep. I remember my Kodak, uh -huh. disposable Kodak. Is that, a, is that a picture of a picture? <laughs> is that a picture of a picture? No. Yeah. That's a mus yeah, that's a little musky. What strain that, is that? Oh, uh, that's a tiger. I don't know as far as lake name. It's a t it's a stri uh, bard, but I don't know what lake they come out of. That that's in that's, South Dakota. That's beautiful. That is a nice fish. Uh, yeah. That was right up Highway Two Twelve. Oh, Walter. Yep. Walter. Yeah. That's a nice one. What's that? Twenty six? Twenty seven? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a little under twenty six on that one. Yeah. Oh, is this is this the same? No, no, that's a different flat. Look at that belly. Scene. That's like yeah. forty years ago, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, you look pretty young there, Ted. Yeah, I, I was a pup. The, mu the mustache, <laughs> yeah. the mustache is brown. He kept it going. <laughs> kept the mustache going. That never awesome. stopped. Yeah. yeah. I yeah I shaved my mustache off once and scared the heck out of my kids. <laughs> yeah. I I could start growing my mustache now and it wouldn't be as cool as it is yeah. right. when I'm his age. Well, I think um, next time we have you on, Ted, we'll get you on here before the end of the, before like middle of summer, probably yeah, for, yeah. 
Then we're going to get you right in the middle of Prime catfish and season. Yeah, catfish <laughs> we have a yes, league so. down here. And we yeah. can go over the power of three and your mustache all in one podcast. <laughs> there you go. Maybe, Maybe we should save the power of three to the end of the catfish and season so those guys <laughs> yeah. don't get to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know that um, that little thing, the, the theory of three, we, I don't know if you know it well, whatever. Can I break just a touch? Yep. Yeah, yep. go yeah. ahead. Okay. When we developed that, that took, we did 15 years on that. And we set over 50 world records proving how it worked. And that's, that actually, that's the only reason I set the world records was to document different species being caught using the same method. How many IGFA world records have you been part of? Uh, um, well, uh, between 50 and 70. Wow. Oh, that's good. A lot of line classes. All line classes, yeah. Line uh, class, okay. uh, the, the, the four biggies for me uh, are the two-pound line class channel, the four-pound line. I got the, trip, the trifecta on it. It's ultralight channels. I got two four- and six-pound line classes wow. right now that I still hold. And then I hold the two-pound line class muskie, which, I, I don't know, that's just like my favorite just because it's – Awesome. It's a two pound yeah. line class musky, you know. Yeah, yeah that's sweet. And they have some tea. And it yeah. was st- stroke of luck. He, instead of going over the rock reef, he dove into the deep water. If he would have gone the other oh, we would have never seen him. Yeah, that's awesome. It's yeah. crazy. Well, we appreciate stroke you coming. We appreciate you coming on, Ted, and it's great hearing from you again. I'm sure we'll keep in touch. And I'm that invite's open here for the summer. We'll get in touch about that. And uh, we'll Good. definitely, maybe when you're here to fish, we'll get you on the podcast. Maybe we'll yeah, plan that. That would be, be dumb. sweet. You know, I'd love to. Now. Are you talking I'd about the Minnesota that. River? Oh, I'm in, uh, I fished yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's my backyard. I would, love, I would love to do a trip up there. I would. Yep, That'd I'll take fun. you to some stuff that only the jet boats can get to. We'll go explore. <laughs> Ooh, <there you> go. <laughs> so we appreciate it, and uh, your knowledge is always uh, appreciated from everybody in the catfishing uh, community. And all people that are just listening now that had never heard you talk before are really going to appreciate the knowledge you put yep. out there. So I mean, you can apply that knowledge to a lot more than just that yeah, species more. as well. But yeah, we'll get into that next time. Sounds like a whole yep. new conversation Scott's yep. about to yep. start yep. over yep. there. No, That's a good one. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but thanks, <laughs> Ted, and uh, we'll keep in touch. And uh, yeah, thank you again. Thanks, well, thank you. I, I gr- greatly appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have thank a good you. one. That was great knowledge once again from Mr. Ted. He's the that was awesome. He's just smart. He's real smart. Yeah, he is. He's real good at fishing. He says the things that are like so obvious but that not. you don't think about don't them, think about but once he yeah. says you know, them, you're like, duh. He, he like, doesn't just like, say them. He yeah, has like, why the hell didn't I right, think about right. it? He's yeah. got knowledge to back up what he says, yeah, which exactly. is like he's not just saying something. Yeah. He's, he's oh, got I know. like data to back it up. It's awesome. Wait, Chewy just said he has a spot. I want to hear about this. Let's go. Oh, just I was just thinking about, you know, because I have a spot that I didn't get to fish this year because the water was low in the lake we go to, but I have fished it every year. There's a spot in July that if you show up between 4.30 to maybe 6.30 with the white mop jig, cast it through near oh my the God. bank. Don't tell me you're about to catch a bass. <laughs> Boom. Big bait. Big bait. And that's so true. And I never thought about that. I didn't think that. That has to do with all that. That's a lot. So of stuff. what you should do is you should find where those guys are sleeping and go catch them during the day. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Bass really. And I want to next time. I want to remember to oh, ask him. Bass. I want to remember to ask him how he thinks about <laughs> rivers on how much how he thinks. So I have my theories on the barometric pressure for river fishing, but I, I don't think it's nearly as influential as it is in a lake because the moving water. But I want to know what he thinks about when it's raining or if it's cloudy versus sunny what do you think about that he absolutely thinks about that remember mm-hmm. no, was, i want him to I talk remember. about it. if you see birds flying day is gonna be good <laughs> you you day. no honestly he said he said the barometric barometric pressure mm-hmm. affects birds the same way as they do fish so when the whatever when it's low the birds don't aren't active Right when the pressure's high, they're active. Well, when it's steady, they're more active, probably. Eh. Steady barometer is what you want for anything, in my opinion. But anyway, sure. If but you, if you get a peak, usually it's it's 
during in a Ted's storm. seminar in Kansas City. He was talking about birds on. I do remember was, that. That's a lot of in-depth stuff you don't really think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, everyone has it's their own. True. There's a lot of really good anglers that have a lot of different theories about the barometer and river fishing specifically. He's, got, really. he's got 30 years on us. That's you who I'm talking I mean? to, people like that. Right, right. Everyone has knows. their – people have like full moon mentality, like flathead mm-hmm. fishing's bad during a full moon. Sure, Not someone can say that, but That's someone like saying. Ted says that to me, I'm going to believe Sure. Him. Yeah, as long as there's evidence to back it up, I'll always believe someone. You know, it's, it's not like you're me. not gonna catch a fish. Like you might get lucky and that's that's the whole and... thing I'm getting at. We don't know. No, it's just time on the water. Okay. Anyways. All right. <laughs> no. oh, man. That's what I go. All right. Sorry, Ted. I'm back to time on the water. And real quick here, we had uh, keep the bait in. I touched a little bit last week on him, but um, we had a visitor, me and Scotty, were right here. And, Pat, uh, Pat Hexeth. I don't know if I'm saying that. We don't right. have, yeah, I mean. But yeah, he came in by and he brought in this cool bunch of boxes of old um, hooks. Um, Leaders. From the 30s. It's stuff. just cool. And um, I just wanted to thank him. And we'll, we'll display him here. That's probably one of my favorites is that mineral saver. And there's actually one of those hooks in that box. Which is pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Sense. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna show you guys right now. Chewy's yeah. like, open that up and check it out. I was like, that thing's crazy. Wow. Yeah, you got all these cool boxes. Some of them are actually full. Fluger fish hook. Yeah, yep, they're, they're full. Actually full. And then, is that the same company, Fluger Fluger? Yeah. Fluger yep, Reels? Spelled yep. the same. And then here's these the rods measuring the things that they used to have in their in their tackle shop. Dayton, Dayton, Minnesota. Tackle shop. Yeah. Up by Rogers on the yeah. Mississippi River. So. Those are pretty cool. And he actually said that they had a bunch of these, but they were actually using them for um for, for firewood. For firewood. <laughs> oh my god! And now he regrets it. He should have saved oh, a couple I'm sure. more. But yeah, but that that that, that was cool. That's, That's really super. really cool. Huh. Well, other than that, I think we can talk about the grand opening to the catfish thing and then cut her off. Yeah, April eighth. April eighth. Um, we're getting orders in here to restock for the catfish world i haven't i don't know if pat's still watching but i think he planned on coming to the opening my buddy that plays for the vikings yeah um i haven't talked i haven't i need to for sure the date with him make sure he can do it um so i won't hold off on making like let telling everyone too much until he can commit to it um other than that we're gonna have a lot of rods in we're gonna have a lot of we're gonna have sinkers this year i need lead i'm in charge of food so Dan's well, grilling. Yeah, we're gonna be hot grilling dogs, food. Hamburgers. Out, Dan. Maybe we're have a, maybe a fish fry. I'm we're gonna not have really a lot sure. of clothing, a lot of terminal tackle, a lot of rods and reels. It's gonna be a fun time. There's gonna be a lot of people in here. If you guys want any of the any of our custom stickers from Stoked or Old Carver or my stickers, the flathead ones or sturgeon ones, they'll be in store too. Yeah, Chewy's new apparel line should be out. Yeah, apparel line's gonna be fire. Here, Kitty Kitty. It's gonna be good. So, Meg, Chewy, what do you think? You're thinking? You're at the thinker face on. I'm trying to think of else we've got. I think that's about it. I think that's it. And we will kick off the we will kick yeah. off the website next next Wednesday. We'll kick it off. Yep. So you guys if you guys are not here kitty, kitty. in the area or in the state, you will be able to buy our merchandise apparel online. Yep. So t- get good. yourself a Danny Two Cat shirt. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Oh, good two times cats. are coming. Good times are coming. Are coming. Yeah. We do appreciate all you guys coming in, and yeah. thanks for all you guys coming into the podcast tonight. It was another good one. Next week we have uh, Amy Munsinger. She is the what? She's just an epic female. She fisher. fishes the UPL. Yeah. Oh, I thought she too. was she's one on of the directors. Plan. She's she's involved with a lot of stuff. She's yeah. Cool. Does a lot. A f- great angler, Amy, is mm. coming in next Wednesday. And then the week after that, we have Dieter Melhorn coming in. And then after that, we have Chris Gamel from El Gato Azul El Gato TV. Yep. So we got a great lineup here in the next three weeks. I'm really, really excited nice. for that. And uh, I'm going to keep stacking up people to come in here and we're going to keep it going. We're going to really push hard on this podcast. We've been working really hard at making sure it's right for you guys to view. So. Thank you guys for coming in here tonight. Thanks for Dan for giving me weird looks. And, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to you guys on the next yeah, one. Happy birthday, Tara. Yep. <laughs>